From the National Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your winter storm briefing. Um, this is as of 4.30 on this Thursday, the 13th of January, 2022. And, you know, we're, we're what, three, three and a half, four days out. Um, and as you would expect, and, and I kind of alluded to this when we uh, had our 11.30 briefing this morning, is don't be surprised if there's some changes because we're still you know, we're still, you know, more than 72 hours away. So a lot can change, you know, between now and, you know, next 72, 84 hours or so. So indeed, we have had some fairly big changes. Now, I don't like to make big changes to the briefing if I can avoid it, right? I like to slowly, you know, introduce changes and, and with, you know, so we can avoid sort of the windshield wiper effect. But I think we're getting a little bit better confidence um, that uh, perhaps, you um, that there may be a little bit more freezing rain and ice accumulation than uh, than we earlier expected. So what has changed? Um, well, number one, later onset of timing, later onset time of precipitation. We're thinking, you know, rather than you know midnight Saturday night into Sunday morning, maybe maybe daybreak things get going. Uh, so what about six, maybe nine hours a little bit later uh, start time, and then uh, as I alluded to, greater coverage of freezing rain and some ice. And then, you know, if it starts later, it ends a little bit later. So uh, so it lingers into, you know, Sunday evening. OK, so let's kind of jump right into uh, the second slide here, which um, I've added a few things. Snow, um, I didn't really narrow, um, elaborate any more than what we had this morning. A couple inches of snow, again, along the north of I-85, where you most expect it. Uh, ice up to a quarter of inch of ice. Now, remember, a quarter of inch of ice is, can, can bring down trees and, and branches and power lines. Um, so that's um, expected uh, pretty much um, all day Sunday. Um, so uh, particularly, in, in fact, I'm going to change that right now. Sunday, um, uh, particularly uh, daytime hours, because uh, that was supposed to be changed. I apologize for that. And then, of course, um, you know, with a little bit of wind, that could only add to the uh, risk of falling uh, branches and power outages. Um, and of course, hazardous travel anywhere there's ice accumulation and snow accumulation. So a good portion of central North Carolina, except for the southern coastal plain. If you're in a southern coastal plain, I think you're going to be OK because the rain's going to come in there the earliest and, and, and get rid of any ice accumulation fairly quickly. OK, again, it's southern coastal plain. Everywhere else further inland, it could be, uh, you know, uh, the rain will come in a little bit later. Now, once that rain does come in, I added flash flooding and river flooding because I think once the rain does come in, I think it could come heavy at times. So uh, particularly across the eastern third of the state, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some localized flooding of typical poor drainage areas. OK, so so with any of the heavier downpours and I'll just generalize it and say east of east of I-95. And, and actually, I'm going to change this to. Sunday um, afternoon and evening, and because I think I could be a little bit later um, in the day. And then finally, we can't rule out with, with you know, a lot of uh, water, a water equivalent, we can't rule out very minor flooding of main stem rivers as we head into uh, early next week. We'll, we'll address that uh, as we get a little bit, uh, you know, later down, down, down the road in time. But uh, that, of course, will depend on how heavy the precip is. So, um, and of course, I didn't include black ice on here because that's sort of inherent in hazardous travel. And, and we'll, we, we usually address that when we get a little closer to it, um, if not the day of. OK, so again, just to kind of um, uh, show you in, a, in another way, this next slide is kind of another way to visualize what we think are the uh, biggest concerns and, you know, elevated risk for snow, freezing rain and hazardous travel, you know, uh, uh, limited risk for the gusty winds and flash flooding and river flooding, but uh, I think the power outage risk is pretty elevated as well. Okay, so these maps are new compared to what I showed at 1130. And you'll notice, you're probably looking at that and saying, wow, 7 a.m. for the start time, that is, uh, that's substantially uh, later. And of course that is, that's about nine to 12 hours later than what we showed on our previous briefing. And remember again, big changes like this are not unusual when you're four days, uh, you know, um, three, four days in advance of the storm. But suffice it to say, precip will overspread the state from southwest to northeast Sunday morning. Um, then uh, a wintry mix of precip will then expand across central North Carolina Sunday morning. So you'll see there's a there's everything from 
you know, uh, you're probably wondering, well, why the green? Why the rain on the northern edge? Well, because that that we, what will have to happen is as the rain, initial few drops of precip could be rain because that goes toward cooling down the atmosphere. OK, so so don't don't really, you know, don't be overly concerned about, you know, is there going to be a lot of rain before the wintry mix? No, that's going to be very light and most of that's going to evaporate. Um, so so enter, anyway, once we get to, say, 10 a.m. Sunday, uh, we're going to start to see that uh, precipitation expanding right now. And this again, this is a little bit different than what I showed this morning. It looks like the heaviest precip is going to occur during the afternoon, perhaps even into the evening hours on Sunday. We thought it was going to be more, you know, early Sunday morning, even pre-dawn through the morning hours. Now we've we've pushed that back about six, nine uh, hours or so. So again, uh, there you have it. Moderate to heavy snow will continue along and north of I-85. Again, snow heavy at times is pretty typical in these types of situations in that region. And then we'll see a transition to sleet and then freezing rain south and eastward toward the I-95 corridor there, again, early Sunday afternoon. A corridor of accumulating freezing rain and ice is likely to occur somewhere across the south and southwest Piedmont, northeastward to the middle and northern I-95 corridor. You could see, sort of see that, uh, see that uh, pink area. That pink area is the area that represents that freezing rain risk. So, uh, so yeah, the southern southern Piedmont up toward the central and northern I-95 corridor, and that stretch right there uh, is where we think perhaps uh, the the uh, greatest uh, icing accumulations can occur. Now, again, give us some leeway on either edge of that because you know these transition zones are always tough to pin down, particularly the transition to rain. That transition to rain is very challenging. That green line, that transition to rain could be, you know, 30 miles further west if, if, if it turns out to be a warmer scenario. OK, so so um, but but I but we are confident that as the warm air moves north and up across the eastern half of North Carolina, eventually we're going to see the precip change to all rain as far west as the um, as the US one corridor. Um, and that that is um, that is shown more more so in this graphic here. The western edge of the rain will gradually move westward. Uh, the rain could be heavy at times, and that's why I've introduced the risk for um, uh, the hazard that is uh, indicating the possibility for some localized flooding. Okay, so so as, as you can kind of see, um, you know, precip is now uh, ex expected to continue into Sunday evening. At 11.30, I was expecting it to be done by Sunday evening. Uh, it, it'll still be ongoing Sunday evening, according to our latest uh, uh, thoughts. And uh, and certainly um, the rain, you know, that rain, when it changes the rain, that's a big, big question. Okay. And, and, and how far west the transition to rain makes it. Okay. So while I don't have a graphic to show it, we do expect the precip is expected to gradually diminish overnight into Monday morning. And obviously, things could be still uh, pretty tricky travel-wise uh, Monday morning. Okay, so um, I think we see the snow hang on the longest across the triad and uh, north of 85. That's where the snow and sleet mix will hang on the longest. Will the triad see some freezing rain? Abs possibly, possibly. But I think the greatest amount of freezing rain accrual, ice accrual, will happen basically somewhere along and just south of 85, uh, down toward the southern um, <clears throat> southern Piedmont and the Sand Hills region, uh, over toward the, um, toward the Triangle region. Okay, so uh, that's how we think this is all gonna evolve. Now, when we <clears throat> talk about temperatures, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because again, all of this supports our forecast. Uh, Sunday and Monday's high temperatures, you know, as you would expect, are gonna be uh, quite cold. Um, but then Monday, we warm up a little bit into the 40s, so that'll help with uh, snow and ice melt. And then cold, cold at night. I mean, this is this is what's driving, you know, all these concerns, uh, low temperatures. Um, so so even 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 where it does change to rain, even where it does change the rain and wipes out the freezing rain and ice accrual, you know, assuming there's water still on the road and uh, it could turn to black ice Monday morning. So I think we're going to be looking at some. Uh, more widespread black ice issues Monday morning, even where it does rain, e even where the precipitation 
changes the rain even earliest, the, the earliest, I, sh I should say. Okay, so um, how much? So now uh, I think we're, we're at a point now where we could maybe, um, oh, sorry about that. My PowerPoint literally just crashed. <laughs> Bear with me here for a second. I'm going to pause my uh, screen here while I bring the PowerPoint back up. Uh, gotta love technology, huh? It doesn't happen very often. But my PowerPoint just disappears on me. Bear with me here for a second while I bring this back up again. All right. All right, let's see here. All right. Let's see. All right. I think we're back. All right, let me re-show my screen here. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, technology glitch there. <clears throat> All right, so I think we're at a point now where we can begin to so show some amounts. And in terms of in terms of how much snow, and again, remember this is this is the first half of the event where we think the snow would accumulate. Obviously, based on our current expectations, uh, this is how much snow we expect. Um, you know, snow accumulations will be confined to areas west of I-95 with the heaviest snow, the greatest snow amounts along and north of I-85 in the Triad region. Now, you know, if you're thinking, well, I'm in that one to two inch range. Yeah, you might get one to two inches of snow in that one to two inch range, but it'll be topped off with some freezing rain. So maybe an inch or two of snow with a crust of ice on top of it. OK, so, you know, in the Triad, and, and up toward Roxboro, maybe a little bit less of an icing crust and more of a way of, you know, um, just snow and sleet accumulation. So so that's how much snowfall uh, we expect. Now, you know, of course, um, you know, in these modern times, we always like to give alternate scenarios, the low and high end amount. So if things go wrong, what's the best and worst case scenario if things, you know, kind of go off the rails, so to speak? Now, one alternate scenario, which we call the low end snow amount, is that low pressure moves further north, keeps central North Carolina in warmer air, and greatly limits snow duration, if any falls at all. That doesn't necessarily mean no winter weather. That probably means more freezing rain. So either way, I think uh, central North Carolina is in for some wintry weather. So if these snow numbers are less, uh, I would be willing to bet you that the freezing rain numbers will be higher. OK, so so the other alternate scenario is that the the deeper, colder air holds in place and that would mean higher snowfall amounts, uh, as you could see, uh, you know, a half a foot of snow there in the triad region, uh, four or five inches up toward Roxboro um, in, in, in that two to three inch range or that one to two inch range, a little bit higher, maybe two to three inches. But uh, before it changes to freezing rain, I don't see how we avoid freezing rain in this scenario because there's just going to be so much warm air coming in aloft, uh, the, what you need for freezing rain to occur. Speaking of freezing rain, uh, these numbers, again, three days out, you know, we're, you're gonna see these numbers bounce around a little bit, okay? So we'll be dialing these numbers in and, and, and tweaking them over the course of the next three days. But suffice it to say, I think there's gonna be enough where we'll be able to number one, measure it, and number two, uh, cause tree branches to break and scattered power outages. So, um, you know, again, again, we're, we're three days out. Normally we wouldn't even be given these details three days out, but, um, you know, uh, you know, we'd be given this a day or two out. Um, but, but confidence is pretty high um, that, that some wintry weather event is going to happen. And, and today, since the 1130 briefing, it's switched to more of a freezing rain event than it, than it did a snow event. Okay. So um, in case anybody's wondering, well, how high will the wind gusts get, you know, 25 to 30 mile per hour, um, wouldn't be surprised. Again, that will help uh, knock those tree branches down, power outages, and that sort of thing. All right, so that wraps up pretty much uh, what I have in terms of changes since 1130. Again, moderate confidence. I, I say high confidence that we're going to see a winter storm, but low confidence in the details. So we'll call it moderate. Uh, right now, instead of uh, early Sunday and Sunday morning, now period of greatest impact now appears to be Sunday during the daytime hours. Um, so again, a little delay. So again, just remember that, you know, we're likely to see some snow before any changeover to wintry precip types on Sunday. The snow will hang on the longest north of 85. Okay. And then a period of accumulating freezing rain or ice 
This is now expected across much of central North Carolina. Again, be sure to check back for those uh, tweaked ice accumulation numbers. Inevitably, they will be tweaked uh, as we go through the next few days. Um, travel and ice uh, uh, impacts may continue through Sunday night into Monday. I think that's a, a pretty good bet at this point. And again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. We're three days away. Um, you know, changes to forecast details are inevitable. You know, could you see a shift back? You know, to what I was talking about at 1130? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, you know, it, it could speed up, you know, and or, or it could slow down even more. I mean, everything's on the table at this point in terms of changes because we're three days away. So the best advice I can tell you is please stay tuned um, as we're going to be able to, we'll be fine tuning these details. I'll be doing two of these webinars every day until the storm gets here. Um, I'll be doing one at 9 a.m. every morning, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning, a 9 a.m. webinar. And I'll be doing a 4.30 p.m. webinar again, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and and um, def definitely be sure, same time, same place, same method. Um, and, uh, and again, as always, I'll be emailing these slides out uh, after we wrap up here. And um, so, again, be sure to sure share this graphic. Um, this is important, five things to know. Uh, check that out when you get these uh, on our webpage or email. And again, the next briefing, I think our midnight shift is going to update these PowerPoint slides and send them out. But our next full briefing will be uh, by 9 a.m. tomorrow. But but um, I don't think you're going to see any uh, updates to this this evening. Um, but our overnight shift is our next full forecast package update. So uh, probably before 6 a.m., I'm guessing our midnight shift will send out an update to these slides. And then again, we'll have our full briefing uh, webinar at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning.